faith community, we would like to welcome our visitors, both present and viewing from afar. Uh, today's lesson will go as follows. We will open up our service with devotion from our devotion team. Uh, afterwards, we will have offering by our very own Brother Mike Garley. Uh, following that, there will be a altar prayer by myself, Terrence C. Washington, and afterwards we will have another selection by our very own First Lady. And we will top our service off with a word from our very own Pastor A.D. Garley. Amen. Amen. Down at the cross where my Savior died Down where from cleansing from sin I cried There to my heart Jesus, 
Jesus is his name. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What's his name? Jesus is his name. I love him, I love him, I love him. I love him. Tell me, Father, for Lord Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We want to thank you for this morning, Lord Jesus, for keeping us all week. Lord, we want to continue to pray for the world which we live in, Lord. Yes, and just bless this world, Lord. We're going through a lot of things right now, but we know it looks like it's out of control, but we know with you involved, there's nothing out of control. Because you always got everything in control. So nothing catch you by surprise because you already see what's going on. Yeah. And Lord, we want to pray for our, our elders that's out sick, those at yeah. home that's sick, Lord. We want to pray for them and ask that you take care of them and heal their body, Lord. And bless those that's here, Lord, the yeah. youngsters that have body problems, Lord. Because it's not just the older people, it's the young ones too, including myself, Lord. And Lord, I ask that you test all this incarcerated, Lord, all around the world, Lord. Be with them, test them where they at, Lord. Give them a peace of mind, Lord. Because I know inside that house where they is, there's not too much peace, Lord. So, Lord, I ask that you just be with us this day and forevermore, Lord. In Jesus' name, we're going to ask this. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul.
You can also visit my on Cash App, PayPal, and you also can send it to our P.O. Box, which is P.O. Box 4144, down in California. Zip code will be 90241. Most Heavenly Father, we want to bless the offering that's come in today, Lord, and yeah. those that are sitting out there. We want to ask that you bless them, Lord, and, and touch them, Lord, and just be with them. And just bless the offering, Lord, that we contribute to your work and kingdom, Lord. And we ask all this in your loving Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You are holy, Lord. Lord, 
because we have a lot of people that hate us right now for serving you, Lord. But, Lord, as long as we know we got the word and we know that we have you on our backside, Lord, we know that you have our backs, Lord, and everything's going to be all right in the end, Lord. And so I just thank you, Lord, for the victory in advance for that as well, God. I pray right now, Lord, you help us to clear our minds, Lord, so that we may receive the word. We ask right now, Lord, that you bless our pastor, God, as he comes and gives the word, Lord. Continue to thank you for our pastor, Lord. It's one of the best pastors we have, Lord, in this world, Lord. And I, Heavenly Father, I thank you for bringing him into my life personally, Lord, to guide and load me into the man that I am today and that I'm aiming to become, Lord. I ask and pray, Lord, you continue to use all of us in here, Lord, to go out and be soldiers for you, Lord, to, to, to spread the word, God, and to not only spread the word, but to live it, Lord, to live it as examples, Lord, so that we may draw others to you, Lord, through us. And so, Father God, I just give you the, the praise and glory for that, God. I thank you for opening our hearts, Lord, and helping us to see things for what they are, Lord, but to also see things the way you see them, Lord, the way the Lord sees them. And I just pray we continue, Lord, to, to, to carry that carry that with us, Lord. Carry the word with us, Lord. Carry it with us physically in the book, but also carry it with us in our minds, Lord, that we may know the word so that when it comes time to use it, Lord, we know how to use it effectively, God. And so, Lord, I thank you for that, God. And I just pray right now, Lord, we all have a blessed day, Lord, a blessed day worshiping you and a blessed day worshiping you outside of your house, Lord. As we go back out to the world and back to our jobs and our homes, Lord, we continue to bless, praise you, Lord, and you continue to bless us as our praises, Lord, Father God. And Lord, I pray that you will bless a lot of us, Lord, who are going through financial hardships, Lord, right now. I pray for financial blessings for all of us, God, as times are getting hard, Lord, and people are find it get difficult to know when the next meal is going to come, God, but we know as long as we have you in control, Lord, we know that food's going to come one way or another, Lord. All of our needs will be met, Lord, as we continue to pour all of our needs onto you, Lord, because you're God, you're the King of kings, and Lord of lords, Lord, so we know you have the final say. And we just pray right now, Father God, you continue to fill our hearts with the Holy Spirit, Lord, that we may begin to turn our lives around for a lot of us who may still be on the fence, Lord, of wanting to serve you and serve the world, God. And as you say, be of this world, but not of, be in this world, but not of this world, Father God. And so we ask, Lord, that you continue to work with us, work in our hearts, God. Help us to open our hearts up more to you, Lord, and more to the word, Lord. And we just pray and ask in all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you. you because 
Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you. Then 
we will see others who would face certain tragedies uh, as they would strike. We would find those who would, due to automobile accidents, mm -hmm. be left without a loved one. There are others who, due to health failures and crises, would be left alone. Some would find themselves suffering loss due to stock market crash. But my brothers and sisters, as we look around us and see devastation that can come in many forms and in many ways, I want you to understand this this morning, that sometimes what we find ourselves facing in life is a setup for a comeback mm. that is not over all is not lost god is still able, able to bring us back from where we are mm. to where we need to be the landscape of the text today shows us uh, at the very beginning and outset of God's creation as Adam would have Abel and Cain. Abel would bring to God an acceptable sacrifice in which God was pleased. Uh, with Cain, not so much. That envy and jealousy uh, that was a product of the fall uh, would produce the first murder in world history. Mm. He would rid Adam of his son. And as God would question him and say, where is your brother? Mm. He would try to get slick with God and he would say, am I my brother's keeper? Um, and yet, my brothers and sisters, uh, while he would disrupt uh, that which was good in the sight of God as Abel would bring an acceptable sacrifice, uh, God would show that there are things in life that are merely a setup for a comeback. Mm. Uh, what could have been in the life of an Abel. But even in the absence of Abel, God had a set on the horizon. Mm. God would produce and give another son to Adam. And it would be Seth who would leave a legacy that would lead to the Lord. Huh. It would be through the genealogy of Seth mm. uh, that we would find ourselves at the place uh, where Christ would be born. Uh, and that's what he would share with us in that 26th verse of Genesis 24-26. Um, he would say this. Then men began to call on the name of the Lord. It's through that lineage of Seth. That God would begin a work of redemption. Mm. In the hearts and lives of men and women. God is still working redemption. God is still making a path for men and women to receive, to call on the name of the Lord. Even after murder, even after disobedience, uh, there is opportunity to call on the name of the Lord. Listen. As we fast forward to the prophet Joel, and we would hear uh, 
in the text. This is the day that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He speaks prophetically. He speaks not only of those who were able to call on him in Jerusalem, but those who would call in the days to come. My brothers and sisters, he would speak and leave those words in Joel. To set it up uh, in that first chapter by showing us the devastating plague of locusts. Uh, he would show us by beginning with the news of a terrible plague and we would see uh, this wave upon wave of uh, these insects Many of us are not familiar, not always every day thinking about locusts. Some of us are familiar more so with grasshoppers. Uh, but unlike grasshopper, locusts uh, had a characteristic about them uh, that they would swarm in packs. Mm. And we would see uh, this wave of locusts. Uh, this uh, army, if you would, who would come in and devour the land, trees being stripped of their leaves, mm. fields being ruined of their vineyards and orchards. We would see farmers in despair. Priests who would have nothing to offer unto the Lord. And it would be Joel the prophet who would call the people to turn to God. That's the first chapter. He would share God's judgment in mercy in chapter 2. He would be there uh, that he would see uh, God's judgment on the world. As he would see another invasion of locusts on the horizon. more devastating, more consuming than the last. And he would talk about this is the day of the Lord and how God is sending a plague of locusts not on his enemies but upon his own people. Their disobedience would disturb the land. Mm. Uh, but in that second chapter, he would share and drop this on us as this day is spoken of prophetically. The day had not yet arrived. Uh, he would let them know that there is yet still time for the people of God to repent. Get it right with God. There's still an opportunity mm. for God's people to call on the name of the Lord. Mm. Can I get a witness? Amen. Yeah. Then in chapter 3, he would reach out into the distant future. And he would describe the nations who would be judged and how Jerusalem would ultimately be saved. Those who had 
treated Israel wrong would be called into judgment. They would be summoned to the valley of Jehoshaphat, where armies have camped when besieging Jerusalem. And so we see here, as he would paint the picture in this very short book, uh, he would show us uh, how it is that the people of God were plagued because of disobedience. Mm. He would show God's judgment and his mercy, and he would show how God would judge those who dealt harshly with Jerusalem. Mm. And what it is that we all take away from this uh, is that we must position ourselves to pay attention to what God is doing. When we think about locusts, it, it will lend us to think about certain metaphors. Um, these locusts, as they would be categorized by swarms, invasions will remind us of armies and it will show how oftentimes the judgment of God would come upon the people of God and you remember over and over again, we talked about the fact that there were good kings and bad kings. Those who would pull the people towards God and those who would uh, lead the people into idolatry and idol worship. And there would be this swinging back and forth. But what we all get and take away from Joel's prophecy is that we cannot miss the personal application of how it is that God will judge those who would turn their backs on him. Mm -hmm. Catch this now. We find ourselves with individuals who would say praying time is over who would make snide remarks uh, as if they don't need God. As if somehow or another they pulled themselves up by their own bootstraps and they can go it along. But my brothers and sisters, before we get too uppity and before we get too high on our horses, we ought not miss the personal application here that God can pull our coattail and bring us back into line, allow us to get in touch with reality. While God himself uh, is a loving God. He is at the same time a just God. So sometimes, my brothers and sisters, when those would refuse to obey him, uh, he would sometimes have to allow, either by his explicit will or permissive will, he would have to allow some things to come our way to get our attention uh, to remind us that he is God. Mm. You'll recall when it was time for the people of God to go to battle and uh, there was Joshua would have a massive army and God would whittle it down to 300. And the purpose was to let it be known 
that when victory would come, and victory was coming, that it was God who did it. Lest you with all of this massive army think that somehow or another you did it in your own strength and your own might. No, no, I want you to understand that it was the Lord who fought for you. And God would sometimes allow us to come to our knees so that we would realize that it's still the Lord. Yolanda Adams said it best when she would sing, the battle is not yours, it's the Lord. Revelations 3 and 10 put it like this, because you have kept my command to preserve, per, to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Job 10 and 12 put it like this, you have granted me life and favor and your care has preserved my spirit. And so my brothers and sisters, as we would look out over the landscape, uh, we have to pay much attention and close attention uh, so that we don't miss what God is trying to say to us. Sometimes God is not speaking in the earthquake. God is not speaking in the world when sometimes God is speaking in the still small voice. But it requires us to pay attention that we don't drown out the voice of God with all of the noise around us. Mm -hmm. Because the question is begging an answer and the question is, what shall we do? I mean, the locusts have swarmed the land and devastated the crops. The, the locusts and the drought has, has caused the, the world to be in a dire straits. So, we must ask the question, what shall we do? How is it that we would get out of uh, the problems of this world, the things that we face on the daily, the ups and downs, the, when we're tossed to and fro? How is it that we are able to find ourselves on solid rock? How, how can we uh, find ourselves moving in the right direction? I'm glad you asked. It's right here in the text. Call on the name of the Lord. God gave Adam Seth that men would once again begin to call on the name of the Lord. He would give him a lineage that would lead them back to the place where God hangs out. Uh, not only uh, would he get him set, but ultimately it would be a setup for a comeback. Uh, evil's gone, but Seth is here, yes, to, to have offspring. Seth would give birth to Enosh, yes, uh, and, and ultimately, as the story goes, uh, yes, ultimately they would come to the place where a virgin would give birth to a son. They would call his name Jesus, a savior. Thank you. Yes, uh, uh, it, it's a setup for a comeback. Yes, uh, in the midst of our locust son, uh, yes, in the midst of our devastation and, and, and our shortcomings, God would set us up that it would not be our loss uh, that we would not head to the locker room early All right. I like what Max Lucado would say story after story prayer after prayer surprise after surprise it seems that God is looking more for ways to get us home than for ways to keep us 
out. Isn't that good news? That's what Joel is talking about in that 32nd verse of the second chapter. But he says, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. No matter what it looks like. Yes, your shoulders may be pinned to the back. Uh, yes, uh, and, 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 and you're at the eight count. Uh, but my brothers and sisters, God can lift you up Amen. off of the back before they get to the 10 count. Amen. Can I get with you? Amen. Amen. Day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. As Peter was shared, he would say this in that 22nd verse, Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did through him in your midst. As you yourselves also know. It's him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God. You have taken by lawless hands, have crucified and put to death, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. In other words, to make a long story short, he says God already knew in purpose that Jesus Christ would be born, uh, that he would be born uh, to come, to live and to die. To be buried, but also to get up yes. from the dead. Oh. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, he would get up with all power yes. in heaven and earth in his hand. And, yes. and so he would share with them. Yes, yes the gospel story. Yes, yes uh, and, and he would jump down to that 36th verse and he would say this, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, same question I asked you earlier, to address men and brother, what shall we do? Peter would say to them, as I said to you, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> He gives them the answer in that 38th verse. The answer is simple. Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Christ for the remission of sin. And it's that same solution that God gives you and I this day. If we want an answer to our locust problem, we would come to God just as we are weary, wounded, and sad. We can find in Him a resting place, and He will make us glad. Yes, Lord. God is trying to tell us Psst, over here. I've already given you my son. I, I've already uh, given him uh, the solution and the answer to all your dilemmas. Uh, yes, he had already uh, got crucified and he, he's already taken the pain and the punishment. He's already gone by way of death. Uh, yes, uh, to the other side of resurrection. Over here. Says that if you would just simply come to Jesus, yes. says I'll give you the gift of the Spirit in your life. Mm. The Spirit of God will continue to guide you, even as Jesus Christ has been seated on the right hand of the Father. God gives us another comforter. And that's why He would reference Joel in this second chapter 
Because God is still saying to this day, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. God still has greater things to do in our life. Will you call on him? Will you come to him? First Thessalonians chapter 1 and 10 says it like this, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. Jumps down to the fifth chapter of 1 Thessalonians. And in that ninth and tenth verse, listen, he says, For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. And so I come to share with you this day that God would set us up for a comeback. And, 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 and what God is doing in the text, if you look at Job, the prophecy, it's connected to the beginning as God would give a new son to Adam. And he would share with them that, that there would be men who would call on the name of the Lord there in Genesis chapter 4. And so Joel would reach back to the beginning of time. He would share with them in terms of the current affairs. But then he would reach forward into the not yet. We would see even in Revelation as he would speak of the day of the Lord. And so my brothers and sisters, Joel is just as relevant today as tomorrow's newspaper. Yes, Joel, uh, yes, uh, it, it, it's just as pertinent in our lives as eating food and drinking water. God is still telling us that if men would call on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Doesn't matter what you've been through. You could have lost the son who had godly perspective like Adam. You could have faced health challenges in your life. My brothers and sisters, whatever you've gone through, God wants to set you up for a comeback. God wants to put you in line to inherit what God has purpose for you. We ought not walk around feeling defeated with our heads hung down as if all is lost. Uh, basing our tomorrows on our yesterdays. Uh, yes, our yesterdays don't have to dictate our tomorrow. Yes. Right, Pastor. Talk. Yes. yes. What God has in store for you, it's for you. All you have to do is get your mind right. All you have to do is Get your eyes focused. All you have to do is to concentrate on what God is doing next for you. It's a setup for a comeback. Mm -hmm. Those who call on the name of the Lord yes, yes. shall be saved. Yes. And so I want to invite you right where you are. Thank you. To receive what God has purposed and planned for you. Yes. you. He's been setting it up from Genesis. From the foundation of the world, Jesus Christ was the Lamb slain. God's been setting up our comeback the whole time. And it's up to us to see what God has in store for you. Amen. Yes. And what he has in store for me. And so I want to invite you right where you are to receive it and to believe it. Thank you now, Lord, in Jesus' name.
for you, who you are and what you have done in our lives, for showing us, Lord, from Genesis to Revelation, that the scarlet thread has been spun, that Jesus Christ has been laying the path for our victory. All we need to do is call upon your name and we can receive what you have in store for us. Bless us now in Jesus' name we pray. Bless every heart, Lord, as they would ponder and consider receiving and accepting. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank God for this another Lord's Day. Amen. All that he is and all that he is doing in our lives today. Amen. Uh, let us now take a moment and pray one for another as we leave this place. Amen. Asking God's blessings upon someone other than ourselves. Just asking that God would touch, that God would heal, that God would deliver, that God would provide. Uh, let us just simply pray and as we pray for somebody else, somebody else is praying for us. How uh, we thank you today, Lord, for every prayer that has been uttered on behalf of your children today. Lord, we pray that you would bless us now indeed. Lord, that you would continue to give us just what it is that we stand in need of. Bless, Lord, our going out and our coming in. Lord, we pray that you would order our steps, that you would lead us along the way of life as we sojourn from here to glory. Lord, we pray that you would just continue, Lord, to let your angels be a fence all around us each and every day. Lord, we pray that you would bring us back here safely on next week. Lord, that you would bring each and every individual into the house, Lord, as we would share the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let us all say in song. Amen. Amen.